What's the most budget-friendly knife in your collection? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And let me know, how far down the rabbit hole have you gone budget-wise? And while you're down there, go ahead and show the like button some love. It's feeling a little bit lonely today. Speaking of today, we're talking about the Remet hand feel, and we've already done an overview, and if you'd like to check that out, click on the link in the corner. Now, we have been checking out some really, really good budget-friendly knives for the last several months, and the competition has never been stiffer. Going into 2023, these knife companies really have to step up their game when it comes to budget-friendly knives. So, today we're going to find out just how well Remet, formerly known as QYGMGS, has done. They've listened to our feedback, they've listened to the feedback of the community, and they've delivered. But what did they deliver? By the time we're done, you will know. Is the Remet hand feel a grail? or? Is it garbage? All right, let's talk about the Remet hand feel. Now this knife costs $40. What do you get for $40? We're gonna talk about it today. Let's start off with materials. Now for materials, we're looking at G10 9CR18 steel and of course, steel liners with a stamped steel pocket clip. It does have ceramic bearings, which is fantastic to see at this price point. And at this price point, I'm absolutely okay with all of those materials. They're not amazing. And I won't try to say that they're amazing. Even at $40 price point, they're not amazing, but they are good and they are well executed and so for that reason we're going to be giving it a six out of ten for materials next up we have ergonomics how does it feel in the hand well with the name hand feel you would expect this to be hand meltingly good at forty dollars right well here's the thing it's not bad it's actually pretty decent the fact that we have shadow box steel liners that adds a little bit of girth really helps it out we do have some moderate jimping right here nothing to really write home about um, but it's there and it's in line with your index finger so that's good uh, if you choke up on it like this you can get a full four finger grip um, i have large to extra large size hands and so that's nice uh, the the knife is not gigantic this is going to be a knife that would be good for camping uh, good for hunting fishing gifting and so you don't necessarily need a huge knife for that but for the small cutting tasks this will definitely do the trick the ergonomics feel solid the g10 is grippy but not harsh on the hand and you can of course change up your grip so if you want to do an ice pick grip there's no problem whatsoever regular grip is fine as well and then of course you could do a draw cut or a drag cut um, this knife has handle scales that are really meant to fit well in the hand but also fit many hands we have a little bit of a cutout right here where it's telling you hey your fingers have to go here just deal with it and you know they do a pretty decent job the ergonomics on here are definitely good um, they're not absolutely amazing it's going to be getting a 7 out of 10 for ergonomics Next, let's talk about Fidget Factor. And when we're on a folding knife, Fidget Factor is more than just how many deployment options does it have? And people love to just, you know, bag on that. Like, it's a tool first. And you know what? I, I agree. A knife is a tool. But it can also be something that's enjoyable to handle and actuate. What makes a knife enjoyable to handle and actuate? Well, we've got the action, the pivot, the detent, the lockup. There's a lot of different things that make a knife fidgety, and it's way more than just what kind of deployment options they have. In this case, the deployment options are thumb studs and a flipper tab, and the action is running on ceramic bearings, which feels really smooth. Now, I do want to mention something real quick, and that is that the action wasn't immediately this smooth right out of the box. I had to fidget with this for about five minutes, 
and then I really felt those ceramic bearings kicking in and it could just be that maybe the detent ball needed to wear a track into the blade. That's actually pretty normal. The break-in period was pretty dang fast. So there's no complaints here. Now we have this really, really smooth action and it feels like ceramic bearings, which is great. It's kind of semi-hydraulic, but also very smooth and, and fall shut. And, you know, in this case, it does take a little bit of a shimmy, uh, but you can do that. Reverse flick on this guy is fantastic. The flipper tab is really hard to fail and that's attributed to the detent ball. It's about as light as I can hit that flipper tab and it's working rather well. So it's fun to fidget with because of how smooth it is. The feeling of that action is just straight up addicting. And when you get into knives, you'll know what I mean. When the action feels glassy, that's a feeling that everybody enjoys. And it's also why this is going to be getting a solid eight out of 10 for fidget factor. Next up, we have the lock. Now the lock is in fact a liner lock. And if we were to look up really closely, you'll see that we're sitting there around 22, maybe 25% on a good day. Uh, it's, it's a liner lock. It's not meant for super heavy duty stuff like batoning or spine whacking. We're not going to do that. That's not really what it's meant for. It's meant for the lighter cutting tasks, light to moderate. I'm talking open up boxes, you know, at most maybe do some feather sticking. Uh, would I jam this into something and you know, try to wrench it free and it, no, uh, I would use a fixed blade if I was doing stuff like that. Um, the lockup is solid. There is no blade play left, right, up and down. There is no pivot lash and on the centering, it's nice and centered. So there's absolutely no complaints there, but at the end of the day, it is still a liner lock and it's not the most amazing liner lock either. There, I have one small suggestion. That lock bar is not uncomfortable to disengage, but it's also not comfortable. Something they could have done to make a small improvement that would not necessarily have cost them that much more money is to actually chamfer out the inside of that lock bar. And they didn't, um, so it's not as comfortable as it could be. Uh, they could have also crowned the lock bar, which some companies are beginning to do, and they didn't. Uh, they just kind of left it squared off and knocked down, and that's totally fine. It's Remember, guys, it's a $40 knife, but it's also why uh, this is getting a 6 out of 10 for the lock. Finally, we're at fit and finish, and this is indeed our last category that we're going to score things on. Fit and finish is based on not only how well it's manufactured, but also the design language. Now, this is where this knife really shines. Let's talk about some of the improvements they made. First and foremost, you'll notice there is no billboarding on this blade whatsoever. Knife enthusiasts do not like billboarding on the blade because it obstructs and disrupts the design of the knife and you can't help but stare at you know a logo interrupting the design of the blade. In this case, it's not there and that's fantastic. Uh, I really do like the fact that they now have that billboarding on the pocket clip. I feel like that's a good spot to put it. If you have a stamp pocket clip, that's really great. Another thing that they do really well is they do not sacrifice the action for anything. They could make this cheaper with steel bearings. And I think that most people would actually be okay with that. Uh, however, the fact that they are using ceramic bearings really goes to show that they care about how this knife feels in the hand for people when they actually go to use it. And so that's really nice. The blade being this traditional leaf shaped drop point is going to be really good for the regular utility things that you're going to be using the knife for. And the fact that we have some light jimping here on the inside of the handle scales adds to that grip and that feel in the hand that the knife is secure and the knife is definitely secure. There is no choke up point on here, but it does definitely doesn't need to have one. And I'm glad that they didn't try because it just wouldn't have looked that great, but you know, there it is. And then finally they gave it a name. And I'm so glad that this is not just a model number, but it also has a name because it feels a bit more personal when you have a knife with a model name. Maybe I'm just crazy. Let me know if you think that I'm just absolutely bananas. Uh, you will notice that I put a mirror polished edge on this blade and I did that because 
this knife was given away in a giveaway on my live streams, which if you haven't checked out, those are every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Mountain, 10 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you drop by. We do lots of fun stuff on those. But this knife is fantastic because, again, it's $40. And for a $40 knife, it does really, really well at all the things that you want a $40 knife to do. It locks up. There's no issues with the fit and finish whatsoever. And for $40, I think that it's absolutely a good knife to get. However, it is going to be getting an 8 out of 10 for fit and finish. So, here we go. Let's summarize where we're at so far. For materials, it's a six. For ergonomics, a seven. For fidget factor, it got an eight. For the lock, it was a six. And for fit and finish, it was an eight. You add up all of those and you get a grand total of 35. At $40, that is a really good score. This is a knife that I could absolutely suggest as a gift. It's not going to break the bank if you do if you're doing like a white elephant or like a christmas stocking stuffer or what have you this would be a great knife and i do like the fact that it polished the edge really nicely and so you can spruce it up a little bit if you want a polished edge a mirror edge on here looks pretty dang good and i'm happy with how that turned out let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. I wanted to keep this one simpler, a little bit quicker than I normally do. And let me know if you prefer this length of a video. Guys, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more grail or garbage knife rankings, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Will Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.